So the only thing more important than knowing how to make paintings you're happy with is knowing what to do when you make paintings you are not happy with. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about 10 things that you can do when your painting doesn't come out the way you want it to. All right, welcome to Paint Coach. My name is Chris Fornatero, and I'm here to help simplify oil painting so that you can get better faster. So I know oil painting can be very frustrating. You know, you're trying, you're trying, you don't know what you're doing wrong. The painting's not turning out the way you want it. I'm gonna tell you something that's gonna make you feel better, which is you are going to learn a lot more from your failed paintings opposed to your successful paintings. Now, there are a lot of people that say, well, there's no such thing as a failed painting. I don't agree with that, but I do think that it is up to the artist to decide whether it was a success or not. Only you know if you achieved what you were trying to achieve with that painting. Now, yes, sometimes you can surprise yourself and learn something you didn't know that you were gonna learn or do something you didn't know you were gonna do, but most of the time when we're painting, there's something that we're trying to achieve, something we're trying to get better at. Now, that leads me to my first tip, which is honor the effort. I know it doesn't feel good when a painting doesn't turn out how you wanted, but you cannot let yourself slip into the mind mindset of thinking that it was a waste of time. I know it can feel like it was, and you spent so much time on it, and now it's a painting that nobody's gonna see. And I've always said that you need to think about it like you have to go through the bad paintings to get to the good ones. There's no way around it. No matter what, you had to go through that painting to get to the other side, to the better paintings. The truth is you're gonna have a lot of paintings that you're not gonna like how they turned out. And if every single time you have one of those, you get down and discouraged and not wanna paint, you're not gonna keep painting and you're not gonna get better. The only way you're gonna get better is through practice. And don't think that there are painters out there that are always painting great paintings. They're not. Every single painter, no matter how good they are, has stacks of paintings that no one will see that they don't like. All right, tip number two is try to identify what didn't work. You know, don't make this painting be for nothing. Try to learn from it. I know this is hard. You know, you're frustrated and you got to kind of calm down and be like, all right, what didn't work about this? I feel like this is a big part of oil painting that a lot of people don't talk about that much, which is being able to diagnose problems in your own work. Especially with oil painting, it's so reworkable and you can adjust things so much that I feel that I'm doing that while I'm painting. You know, I'm stepping back and diagnosing my painting, be like, what's working, what's not working? How are the values? How are the colors? How's the drawing? Oh, I need to push this darker. I need to push this lighter. Oh, I need to wipe that off. I need to change this. And you can only do that if you develop an eye and an understanding of why things work and why things don't work. Now, I don't wanna say there are rules with painting, but there are definitely things to be aware of. Or how a great painting instructor of mine named Thomas Van Auken said, there is cause and effect. You know, how dark or light you paint something is gonna have an effect on the painting. Your value relationships are gonna have an effect on the painting. The colors you choose is gonna have an effect on the painting and how it's viewed. So really take the time to figure out what didn't work about your painting. That leads into my next tip, which is try and connect what you think didn't work to one of the fundamentals. That's composition, drawing, simplification, edges, form, value, color. I think that's it. I don't know if I'm forgetting one. I can guarantee you whatever problem you think you have, it is rooted in one of these fundamentals. And it's a great way to think about improving your work. You know, for example, don't think about, oh, I need to learn how to paint mountains better. Instead, try and figure out what you didn't achieve specifically with the mountains that you painted. Maybe it's, oh, I need to simplify the shapes more or oh, I need to get better values so they seem like they're far away and in the distance. So once you figure out the fundamental you need to work on, you can actually do paintings or exercises that help you practice that fundamental. For example, my portrait course, a big part of portraits is seeing value shapes and being able to have good value relationships. So in there, I have an exercise that allows you to work with that directly. You paint a version of the reference broken down into big, flat, simple, value shapes. For example, if you struggle painting flowers, don't be thinking, oh, I need to get better at painting flowers as much as which of the fundamentals are you struggling with when you paint flowers? Are you noticing that your values are off? Are you losing the form the more you paint it? Thinking that way will help you solve your problems a lot faster. All right, next tip is see if you can fix the problem. If not, move on. You know, sometimes you can fix the problem. You can, you know, adjust the values or the colors or remove something. But if you can't, it's okay to move on. This is why I always suggest for beginners to do 
short, quick paintings, you know, paintings that you can get done in one or two sittings. That way, if it's something that you're just not gonna get, you're not stuck on it for weeks. I feel like the fastest way to get better is to get as many repetitions at the painting process from beginning to end as possible. So if you're painting a painting that's on a big 30 by 40 inch canvas that takes you two weeks, then you're stuck only solving the problems that that one particular painting is going to present to you for two weeks. Instead of 15 smaller paintings that all present different problems and give you a lot more practice. Which leads me into my next tip, which is, if you're in the middle of a painting and it's not working, don't be afraid to scrape off the paint and wipe it off and save the canvas. I do this all the time. If the painting's not working, I'll take a palette knife, scrape off as much as I can, get some paint thinner and paper towel and wipe it off. Yeah, the canvas isn't gonna be perfectly white when I'm done. It's gonna be toned kind of a muddy color, which is fine. I tone my canvases anyway, so I can definitely reuse that again. All right, tip number six is look to artists that you admire. A lot of times if I'm stuck on a subject, I can't figure it out, I'll go look at painters that are really good at that subject and see how they solved problems with that subject that I'm dealing with. For example, with portraits, I'm constantly going back to Michael Shane Neal's book. You know, whenever I hit a plateau or I feel stuck, it's just such a good refresher. And to see somebody who's further along than you are and how they went about doing things. I've said this before, but I feel like the process of learning to paint goes like this. You'll be doing really good, really good. And then all of a sudden you'll be like, Ugh, I feel like I'm not as good. And then you'll come back up even higher than before. And then you'll go back down and you'll be struggling and you'll come back up even higher. And every time you're in those down parts, it's good to have books or whatever to go back to and kind of redirect yourself and figure out where you want to go with your work. All right, tip number seven is uh, know when your reference isn't the best reference. A lot of times these are photos and so many times with myself and I see also with students is just they're using a reference photo that is not doing them any favors. I had this problem so much when I was doing commissions, people give me a photo and the person's head they want me to paint is like this big and you're like trying to like figure out the details of this or that or you're painting a landscape and there's an area in shadow that's just completely blacked out and you can't see anything. So know when the photo is a difficult photo to paint. I get a lot of students asking me, you know, oh, what's a good photo to paint? You know, is this a good photo? Is this not a good photo? And I feel like the only way to learn what's a good reference and what's not is just practice and paint a lot. All right, tip number eight is Try and change subjects. You know, if you're painting one subject for a really long time, it's very possible to get stale or you're just going through the motions. This is why I always am switching up what I paint. I'll paint still lifes, landscapes, portraits, animals, whatever, to help keep me fresh. And I always feel like when I'm painting one subject for a long time and I switch over to another subject, I have little breakthroughs because different subjects can exercise different parts of your painting skills. So when you're working with one subject, you're getting strong in this one set of skills and then you switch over to a different subject, bringing those new skills over, and it makes that new subject a little bit easier. Now, my next tip actually branches off from this, which is try and just paint a simple still life. You know, paint an apple, just an apple on a table. I feel like this is a good palate cleanser, no pun intended. A lot of times when I feel like I've plateaued or, or I'm burnt out, or I don't know what I wanna do next subject-wise or where I wanna go, I'll just do one of these simple still lifes and see how good I can do them. I'll just get an apple or an orange or a lemon or something and just practice. You are never too good to do one of these because everything that you need to know about painting can be learned from doing these simple still lifes. A lot of times when I have a student who's struggling a lot with something and they're trying to paint a certain subject over and over and over and over again, I'd be like, all right, just let's take a break from that and just do a simple still life study. And every single time they feel refreshed and know what they need to do when they go back to that subject. All right, and tip number 10 is Try to figure out what you can do next time to prevent you from making the mistakes you made in the painting. For example, with landscapes, if I'm ever planning on painting a larger landscape, I will do a ton of little three by four inch studies just to figure out the composition, the colors, the values. That way when I get to the bigger painting, there aren't any surprises or big problems that I need to solve. Also, before you go into a painting, look at your reference and be honest with yourself if there are areas that you don't know how you're going to do. I know with myself, when I'm looking at a subject, there are areas that I feel like I'm confident. I know, oh, I know how to do that part and I know how to do that and oh, I see that value there. But if there's something in there that I'm like, I don't really know how I'm gonna go about doing that, and I just go into the painting and just kind of like winging it, hoping you know, it will come to me and I'll just know how to do it, it rarely ever works. So if you're painting a subject and there's a part of it that 
you don't know how to do, maybe just try and practice that one area first. You know, do a couple studies of that area. You know, maybe practice drawing it or getting the colors or values before trying to tackle it in a full-blown painting. All right, I hope you found this video helpful. My main goal with this video is to make you less frustrated when a painting doesn't come out the way you wanted. If you like the video, please hit the like button, subscribe to the channel. If you wanna see what I'm painting on a daily basis, you can follow me on Instagram at Forza43. I'm Chris Fornatero here telling you to go get painting.